Hey guys, I have had a few people ask me about uh, installing a file manager, uh, like a, a graphical user interface or a GUI style file manager for uh, Docker and Portainer and just servers in general. So uh, I've had a couple of requests for something called Crusader and I've had a couple of requests for something called Cloud Commander. And that's actually what we're gonna look at today is installing Cloud Commander um, in Docker and then uh, kind of falling into that with um, uh, Open Media Vault and Portainer. We're going to use uh, both of those uh, to get full access to the server here. So let's go ahead and switch camera angles. We'll jump over to my desktop and I'll show you how easy it is to install Cloud Commander in uh, Open Media Vault using uh, Docker and Portainer. Okay guys, so here we are on my desktop. There's actually a website for Cloud Commander uh, called cloudcmd.io. Uh, if you wanna know more about Cloud Commander, you can definitely come here and read about it. Uh, there's lots of parameters and things like that that probably won't really apply to anything we're doing. But if you wanna know more about how it's built and that sort of thing, uh, uh, cloudcmd.io uh, is their official website. Uh, but we're not gonna use that, so I'm gonna close it. Uh, here, of course, we're gonna take a look at uh, the uh, hub.docker web page for uh, cloud razor slash cloud commander so uh, i will have links to all of this in the description down below as per usual uh, in fact there'll probably even be a, a blog post about it that you can find in the description as well so if we um scroll down a little bit uh there's there's lots of different ways to install it um but what we want to do is actually come down uh, to docker and we're going to take a look at uh this right here uh so we're going to go ahead and jump over to portainer here um, we're gonna come into, let me let me see, yep, okay. We're gonna come over to stacks. Actually, I just wanted to make sure I was on the right server. Uh, so we're gonna click on add a stack and we're just gonna paste this in here. So uh, the one thing about it is that uh, Portainer uses port 8,000 and 9,000. So we actually can't use port 8,000 here. So uh, what I'll do is I'll just make it, uh, let's make it port 7,000 for the external port. Now, but we wanna leave it on 8,000 for the internal port, uh, but for the external port, we'll leave it on 7,000. So. This is all we should need uh, to get it to run. But uh, I do have uh, some additional, uh, I've got an additional hard drive attached or mounted to uh, my server and I've got some shares on here. And I just wanna make note of that. So if I come back here and I click deploy, this should take just a little bit. So now we can come in and we can click on here. We can come in and we can look. Okay, so it still says port 8000 here, ignore that. Uh, so what I want to do um, is do 192.168.1.238. I'm going to do port, oops, port 7000. And here we go. Now we've got uh, access to uh, a, a basically a, a graphical user interface where we can uh, navigate through file systems and edit files and do that sort of thing. So uh, just as an example, if I were to go into uh, the ETC folder here, you can do this on either folder, it's fine or on either side, rather. Um, but then if I wanted to, I could uh, click on a file, I can right click it, I can view it, I can edit it, rename it, delete it. All of these options are here. Uh, there are also options, if you click on one of these files, you can actually use your F keys to manage uh, some of these same uh, functions here. So if I wanted to delete ucf.conf, I could press F8 on my keyboard, or I could just press this right here with my mouse. Now, I don't wanna do that obviously, but I just wanted to show uh, that we do have full access to the server here. So what I wanna do is come up to here and if we come back over to Open Media Vault, we'll see that um, our file, or sorry, our, um, our disk rather, um, here it's mounted. Uh, so if we come over to File Systems, we'll see uh, this right here, this is that dev SDA1. This is my 256, or my, yeah, my 256 gig drive. Um, and right here, you can see the mount point is SRV slash, slash dev disk by labels files. Now, if I come back over to Cloud Commander and I go into SRV, there's nothing there. And that means that we won't be able to get access to any of our configuration files or anything that we have stored on that external drive. So what we actually have to do is come back to Open Media Vault. What we wanna do is actually copy this line right here. So what I'm gonna do is just go to inspect. Um, I'll just double click in here and I'll right click and click copy and I'll close that. So that way I've got this mount point uh, copied into my clipboard here. So what I actually wanna do is come back to stacks, open up Cloud Commander, go to the editor. And what I wanna do is actually drop down another line under volumes here, do a, a, a minus space. And I wanna paste that, then I'm gonna do a colon 
and I'm going to paste it again. And that's just going to tell uh, this application, this cloud commander, to mount uh, that particular folder to itself. Now, what's going to happen if I click that? This should go pretty quick since it doesn't have to re-download everything. Here we can double check. Okay, so it's still on. It still says it's on port 8,000, though it's on port 7,000. So what I'm going to do is just refresh. Now, just to, to show you here, this is where we started. Now, what I did was uh, just refreshed on the SRV. And here you can see now we've got dev disk by label files, just like we did before. Now we've got access to everything that's in our uh, mounted folder, our external drive that we've mounted. Now we have full access to that as well. Now, if you had multiple external hard drives mounted, uh, you would do the same thing. You would just go in here and you would copy this. You go back to Portainer into stacks. You'd open it up, you'd edit the stack. You'd come down here and you do the same thing. Um, you know, but for whatever that happened to be, whatever your other mount point was, you would just do the same thing there, colon, paste it again, and then you'd have access to that file or that folder structure as well. But just know that you will have to do that if you've got an external uh, drive mounted and you want to be able to access that with Cloud Commander. That's the process you'll have to go through in order to make that happen. Okay, guys, so that one's a pretty easy one. That one gives you access to uh, having a, a graphical user interface file manager here. Now, I will say I don't necessarily condone this. Um, and the reason is that if you're going to be running a home server or a server of any kind, you really should get comfortable using uh, different uh, SSH or shell commands uh, to go through and navigate through your server, add and remove directories and files, uh, all that kind of stuff you should be comfortable doing with, uh, with uh, shell commands in, in your application, whether it's putty or, or whatever you're using to connect uh, to the SSH. Uh, terminal there. So uh, again, this is a good way to do it. But uh, again, I really encourage you to get familiar with uh, shell commands or SSH commands to manage your server. But people requested it. So I thought, why not? Let's go ahead and make this video. So if you found the video helpful, do me a favor, uh, give the video a thumbs up. It really does help more than you might realize. Uh, also, if you're interested in learning more about Docker, uh, Open Media Vault, things like that, I'm doing uh, lots of these types of tutorials here lately. So if you're interested in more, I will have other videos in a playlist link in the description down below. Uh, if you want to be notified when new videos come out, of course, get subscribed and you can be notified when I release new videos like this. So with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.